tell us a story, Uncle Jebediah. Okay, children, I tell you a story. I recall when I was a young child. My father and I journeyed to the lands of the east. We did not know what to expect. For there were no maps in those days. There were no telephones and other such gadgetry. The native peoples communicated with one another by lighting a fire and signaling with the smoke that was coming off of that fire in sort of a coded message. These signals of smoke were known simply as smoke signals. A typical conversation among the native peoples might consist of something like that was a beautiful harvest moon that we witnessed last night sent to us by the great spirit. Did you happen to see it also? The response would be, why, yes, we did. It was quite magnificent. It did shine upon the lake as we viewed it. We did. We also enjoyed it. It was a lovely harvest moon. Other such topics of conversation might consist of the uh, the buffalo meat is particularly succulent this season. The response being, why, yes, it is. As a matter of fact, we're cooking some over the fire right at this moment ourselves. I hope you enjoy your, I hope you enjoy yours, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Bon appetit. Excuse me, uh, did you say uh, bon appetit? Why, yes. Yes, yes, we did. We said bon appetit. Okay, well. You know, we're not, uh, we're not familiar with that phrase. Oh, well. You see, Bon Appetit is, uh, you might recall some of these uh, French fur trappers that passed through last summer. It was a phrase that they, uh, that they shared with us. Oh, I see. Okay. I do recall those French fur trappers. They came, they passed by, they crossed the Great River. And came and came past our encampment. Also, we did have a brief conversation with them. I do recall those those folks coming through here. Yeah, bon, bon appetit. Uh, it basically means in, enjoy your dinner. These were the types of conversations that the native peoples would have one with another. I mean to their smoke signals. And these are these are simply these are not these are not specifically literally what uh, what was spoken, but these are just a general outline for for demonstration purposes here. Uh, with these 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 conversations I have just dramatized. At any rate, my father and I continued our journey in the direction of the rising sun to the lands of the east without a map in hand nor a 
technological device to permit communication with our loved ones at home that we had said goodbye to for some time. They would not see us for several weeks as we set out on this journey, hoping to discover some new lands and encounter some new people and transact some business, which we were destined to engage in with these mysterious people of the eastern lands. We traveled day by day and we slept by night. And sometimes if my father had some particularly disturbing indigestion on account of a tuna fish sandwich he may have eaten. In the course of our travels, we may also have been awake at night. As a general rule, we were sleeping at night and we were traveling by the light of the sun as the crow flies. The sun setting behind us The dark, mysterious night, the stars shining as we made our way eastward on that long road that lay before us. The native peoples communicating as they did in those days with the Signals of smoke. They spoke mostly of nature, the sky, the weather, the rains, the grasses, the, uh, you know, the grasses spoke to them as they uh, communicated with each other. Speaking of the the buffalo and, uh, you know, as they enjoyed their harvest moon sent by the great spirit. And they could hear the wolves howling in the distance and the, the grass blowing in the breeze speaking to them. I've been here all along. I'm here now. I will be here forevermore your ancestors knew me as you now know me and your children should know me for I am the eternal grass I blow in the breeze I feed I feed the I feed the animals that graze upon me the, the wander in the fields the animals that migrate across the plains and move around with the seasons and with the rains as you as you people do yourselves as a nomadic tribe a tribe that you, you're living you're living close you're living close to mother earth these are some of the thoughts that went through our minds as we journeyed the year was 1978. It was a strange time. A lot of smoke in the air. Mostly on account of the natives' smoke signals, as a matter of fact. We journeyed in a modern contraption made of the metals that came out of the earth. With the force of spherical shapes that rolled down the hills and up the hills, made from simply the material of a mysterious jungle tree from a far distant land, the rubber tree. 
the machine we rode upon, a mechanical device formed of wizardry and imagination containing a type of a little Dutch oven type pot belly stove contraption carrying within it a mighty fire. A dragon breathing life into these round metallic spheres that pulsed up and down like a mighty wind so fast a human eye could barely catch its movement. And that is what powered our steel dragon across the prairies and over the mountains. As we journeyed toward the lands of the east. Along the way we encountered many marvels, things we had not ever conceived in our own homeland. Things that only are strange and fascinating group of foreigners could ever concoct. (coughs) (coughs) One such mystical place that I recall with fondness was a watering hole where a lonely traveler can stop for relief. There was food to be had prepared by diligent and loving hands for the weary traveler to gain sustenance. The place I speak of was a a wonderful house of hospitality. In those days it went by the name of Howard Johnson. We inquired here within, is this Mr. Johnson on the premises? We should like to speak with him and commend him on his fine hospitality and the flapjacks that he so carefully prepared for our enjoyment, that it may nourish and strengthen our bodies as we continue on in this wonderful journey into the lands of the East. No, Mr. Johnson is, uh, he's away on other business, we were told, I'm afraid. We'll not be here to greet you in person, but uh, rest assured, you are in good hands. We are his faithful servants. We shall pass along your kind salutations and let uh, let Mr. Johnson know that uh, you do appreciate uh, all that he has provided here. Well, that sounds... Agreeable and suitable, we replied. If in the course of time we have the privilege of meeting uh, Mr. Johnson, you know, or his lovely wife, Mrs. Johnson, or his son, Howard Jr. We don't know if he has a son named Howard, but whatever his son's name, be it Jethro, Bartholomew or Nathaniel we should be pleased to greet him also it should it be that he has no sons but rather daughters instead why we would be pleased to make their acquaintance as well and seeing as how we're hypothesizing should it be Mrs. Johnson is barren and cannot bear children, and there are no Johnson children. Well, 
we just uh, have to mosey on down the road without the privilege of meeting these non-existent spawn of the Johnson clan, I suppose. Man, should it be that this this lack of uh, this lack of uh, 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 what's the word I'm trying to think of? Should it be that this here uh, lack of any uh, 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 there's a word for it, and uh, <laughs> I'm gonna think of it even if I have to sit here and. Take my sweet time, get there a whole bottle of whiskey to come up with it. But uh, should there should sh- should it be the fact that it is not the Mrs. Johnson who's to blame for this uh, this lack of uh, uh, there's a word for it. Uh, the word is uh, there's a word for it now. Um, Oh, offspring is not the word, but it's similar to what I'm trying to think of. But uh, perhaps if it's uh, Mr. Johnson's, uh, he is to blame, well, so be it. We don't want to point any fingers. We went and bought a finger, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> Just as we would expect, anticipate he would have no desire to <laughs> point his Johnson <laughs> in our direction. And he's a classic gentleman and all. At any rate, should it be that there, there is no Mrs. Johnson because, in fact, uh, Mr. Mr. Howard Johnson prefers the company of men? Well, we will leave that for the Lord to judge. At any rate, we have enjoyed his omelets and uh, his hot coffee, his pancakes. His orange juice, a little bit of sausages. The maple syrup was fine as well. As such, we'll put a focus more on the wonderful vittles that have been presented to us and have less concern, perhaps, for Mr. Johnson's proclivity for relations, whether it be with women or whatnot. For these are not our primary concerns as we make our journey into the marvelous land of the East. And as I reflect back on these times, these days of wandering and Discovering and exploring. These days of corn cob pipes and Indian smoke signals. Three dollar bought liquor and two dollar whores. I should think, what a marvelous country. We're so privileged to live here with all of its diversity. From coast to coast, sea to shining sea, from the ocean side, all across the dry, dusty mountains of the western lands, across the grassy plains where buffalo roam and cattle 
play Yahtzee in this spare time. We crossed great rivers. Journeyed over yet more mountainous terrain. Finally came to a distant seashore. The smell of fresh fish in the air. Lobsters rattle around in their cages. And seagulls pooping wherever they damn well please. And that ain't easy for a fella to see with a straight face, but I did I just I did it just then and you have no idea what a what a great accomplishment that was. But I'm not here to toot my own horn. No sir. No sir, for that was not the purpose of our journey into these eastern lands. We've come here with an entirely different objective in mind. One that is not easy to an objective that is not easy to describe or to translate to the mortal mind of man. For it entails a far more eternal and abstract conceptualization of the purpose of our lives and why we are here. For it is not merely a journey down a dusty highway into the lands of the east that is encapsulated here in my narrative. No, it is truly a a metaphor. It is a symbolic story to enlighten the mind of man to a far greater journey across the cosmos and across time and space itself. For we know not where we came from, our true origins. Was there a time when we were created? Is there a time when we shall cease to exist? I think not. I think in some sense we have always been there. And now we're here. And in the future we shall be there. And when we are there, to our perception, we shall be here. And there shall be yet another distant horizon where we will say to ourselves, one day soon, although I am here, I shall be there. And this cycle shall continue, it seems to my mind, in perpetuity, with no beginning. No end in sight, merely a continuous cycle, a journey with no beginning and no end in sight, but rather a journey that exists for the sake of itself as those smoke signals blow past me through the air, whispering to me. Like the grasses, I have always been here. I was here before. I'm here now. And I shall be here forever.